What we figured out is that it takes four and a half hours on average of time spent with a new realtor in order to get your first referral. I'm Nick Carpenter, welcome back to the channel. Today let's talk about how to get that time in, what you're gonna do, how do you take somebody from being a stranger into actually sending you the very first referral. All right, so obviously there's a lot of ways that work. I'm just gonna tell you what's working for us right now. So the first thing we like to do is invite people to a group class or some sort of group event. Okay, we can get 10, 20, 30 realtors in a room. We can figure out who we like and don't like. And we can get about 60 to 90 minutes of time with a whole bunch of realtors at once. So when you look at how are we gonna get that four and a half hours of time so where we can get that referral, okay, that's gonna be the first step is we're gonna be able to get an hour to an hour and a half. Let's just go with an hour and a half for ease of uh, measurements here. You can get an hour and a half with somebody by hosting a, a public class once a month, okay? So then what I like to do is after the public class, that's when you wanna take the relationship into uh, where you're gonna be able to actually build a relationship with them one-on-one. -on -one. So we have to move it into a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, you can move that straight into an in-person meeting, but what I, what I think is actually better is if you take, instead of going directly in person, and you just meet them on Zoom the first time, right? So when you call somebody and you invite them to a little meeting, just have it be on Zoom. It's a very easy yes. It's way safer. It's going to be, you know, easier for you to actually restrict the meeting to 15 minutes versus, you know, if you go meet somebody at a coffee shop, you know how it goes, man. You'll sit there for two hours and, and you know, by the time you realize that half your day is done. So you can keep, do the first meeting on Zoom. Again, you get a way to meet somebody, do some exchange of value, and you can keep that meeting to 15 to 30 minutes, okay? So let's just say, for example, that's a 30-minute meeting. So now, so far, you've got two hours of time spent with somebody. So now we gotta look at how do we get the additional two and a half hours. So after you meet with them on Zoom, if you assume like everything went really good, you had a great meeting, that's when you can actually move into one-on-one -on -one in-person meetings. And if you book those for 60 minutes, you know how it goes. Odds are you're gonna actually get 90 minutes with somebody, right? So if you meet them on Zoom and you figure out some other ways that you can help them out, and then you offer to meet them in person, right? Like, hey, like, you know, would it be cool if I just come by and we just do some of this next week? I mean, we can just, in like an hour, we could probably start helping you with your marketing. Whatever your offer looks like, you know, if you're meeting them in person. Because obviously that's the best way to get somebody to meet you in person is not just to meet you, right? I mean, it's it's because you have some sort of value offer, some sort of um, proposition for them that is going to make them want to meet you, right? Like, hey, let's get an ad set up for your open house next week, or hey, let's run an ad and get some leads for your listing, or let's get some more Google reviews, or let's set up your Google business account, or let's do some retargeting to your market, your database, or, you know, let's write weekly emails to your database, or whatever that looks like. Okay, you can have a lot of different value offers to, that can go to realtors, but you want to have some kind of reason for them to actually meet with you, right? I mean, it makes it such an easier yes if, again, if it's not just meeting you. So you go there, you meet them in person the first time, you're with them for 60 to 90 minutes. Now you're, you're in for about three and a half hours. And now what we can do is we can book a second in-person, you know, meeting. Hey, you know, I probably need to run. I've got some other things to handle up on today or... I'm about to I have another appointment coming up in 15 minutes. I need to I need to bounce, but let's keep doing this, right? Let's meet up again in a few days and let's knock some more of this stuff out. And then you go and you book a second meeting. And then at that second meeting, by the time that second meeting is over, that's when realtors are going to start looking for a way to pay you back because the relationship you're just giving and giving and giving, right? You gave them at the class, you gave them on the Zoom. You gave the last time you guys met up in person. Now you're back again giving again. And so the relationship, it kind of is becoming a little bit lopsided. And people don't like being in lopsided relationships. So that's a little bit, you know, I don't want to dive too deep into it, but it's a little bit of what you have to do at these meetings is you have to create that lopsided relationship, right? You want, you want them to feel that because that's how they're going to start looking for a way to get even, to get the relationship back even. And naturally, the only the thing that makes the most sense from a loan officer realtor relationship is for them to send you a referral or for them to start looking for opportunity for you within their database, whether that's with a refinance or anything along those lines. 
right? So that process, you know, again, however you want to get the four and a half hours of time with a realtor, that's completely up to you. If you're doing 15 minute Monday cold calls every week and you're getting an hour a month of time with that realtor, assuming the call is even going 15 minutes, which let's be honest, that's a pretty long call for a cold call. So it's probably going like 10 minutes, right? So you're getting 40 minutes with a realtor every month. So it's going to take you about 10 months of time to earn the first referral if all you do is 10 minute Monday cold calls every week. So do you want that to take 10 months? Or do you want to figure out a process where you can have this, you know, that process completed over a couple of weeks? You know, because if you have somebody come to your class today, you're going to get on Zoom with them in the next two, three, five days. You're going to be on Zoom. You'll be meeting them in person a couple days after that. Meet them again in person a few days after that. So it's like a 10 to 14 day window where you can get this whole entire process completed. And because we just know, right? We just know like on average, it's going to take you four and a half hours of time with a realtor to get a deal. Okay. So sometimes it's going to go way faster. You know, you're going to do a class and somebody's going to send you a referral the same day. So obviously in that case, it took you an hour or 90 minutes with that person. So there may be another realtor that it takes seven or eight hours to get the first referral because it's just a law of averages. But if you know that on average, you need four and a half hours of time with a realtor, what are you doing in order to get that time so that you can earn those referrals? All right. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and leave me a comment and let me know like how long does it usually take you to get a referral from a realtor? I'm curious. Uh, or obviously if there's anything else you want to learn about, leave me some comments, let me know. And I always love video suggestions and we'll see you back here next time. Later.